Right. So uh, how do we get nitric oxide? How, does, how do we get the raw material to make nitric oxide in the body? Well, there's two, two pathways that make nitric oxide in the human body. The one we discussed previously was this enzyme found in the endothelial cells and found in basically all cell types. And so we have to maintain the function of that enzyme. So we know how to do that. There's a certain electrical potential we have to apply to prevent the oxidation of BH4 that maintains NOS coupling and NOS function. And so that's what our product technology does. It basically prevents the oxidation of BH4, maintains normal endothelial function so you can continue to produce nitric oxide when needed. The other pathway is through the oral microbiome. You know, we and others discovered, you know, 20 something years ago that there are bacteria that live in the mouth on the crypts of the tongue that are responsible for producing nitric oxide. And so we have to maintain that normal diversity and ecology of the microbiome. And so these bacteria are responsible for metabolizing inorganic nitrate, which is found in green leafy vegetables and beets and some root vegetables. And so humans don't have an enzyme to metabolize that molecule nitrate. So we're dependent upon the oral bacteria. And so what we're finding is that people with periodontal disease, gingivitis, the entire diversity of the microbiome becomes disrupted. So the bad guys outcompete the good guys, and that's what leads to gingivitis, periodontal disease. And now we know that there's an oral systemic link that people with poor oral hygiene have systemic disease, right? Higher incidence of heart attack, stroke, and cardiovascular disease. And so for years, we thought it was just translation or translocation of those infectious bac bacteria into the bloodstream causing, you know, inflammation uh, and, and causing systemic disease. But now what we're realizing is it's not just the path, the presence of the pathogens, but it's the disruption of the non-pathogenic commensal bacteria and the disruption in nitric oxide production. So what we're finding is that people who use mouthwash, and there's 200 million Americans that wake up every morning and use mouthwash and that destroys the microbiome, it shuts down nitric oxide production, and it leads to an increase in blood pressure, inflammation, oxidative stress, and immune dysfunction. So now we have now we understand that hypertension is really a symptom of oral dysbiosis. And so we have to get people off mouthwash. We have to stop doing things that are antiseptic, because as you know, now with the microbiome project completed, the bacteria that live in and on our body outnumber our human cells 10 to 1. And so we, we have to maintain this healthy microbiome. And we all know today that we, we can't take an antibiotic every day for the rest of our life because of the destruction it does to the gut microbiome. The same principles apply. You cannot use an antiseptic mouthwash every day for the rest of your life without consequences. We're finding that you're, if you use mouthwash, your blood pressure goes up. People are starting to develop erectile dysfunction and you lose the protective benefits of exercise. So you have to get rid of mouthwash. The other problem is fluoride and toothpaste. Fluoride is an antiseptic. It kills the bacteria in your mouth. Uh, and so you have to use a non-fluorinated toothpaste. So get rid of fluoride, get rid of mouthwash, allow the oral microbiome to, to flourish, to repopulate, and it produces nitric oxide and it's regulating systemic blood pressure. Excuse me. Yeah, I saw... That you did one trial that I thought was really interesting, which is you took some young, healthy people and you, you got them to take mouthwash and, and their <laughs> blood pressure went up, significantly up. In, in yeah, the through the roof. Yeah, yeah that, that that was really amazing. Okay, but, but there is another part of the system, which is the, the stomach. Uh, so like the... That's right. Yeah. So can you talk about that? Because it, that can also, if that's disrupted, then you, we're still not going to create our nitric oxide. No, that's exactly right. So what we've told you is part of the story, right? And so like Paul Harvey says, now I'll tell you the rest of the story. <laughs> and so part of that pathway, when the bacteria start metabolizing nitrate in the oral cavity, then when we swallow our saliva, we have to have sufficient stomach acid production because you need stomach acid to absorb nutrients like iron, selenium, chromium, B vitamins, and you need stomach acid to break down proteins into amino acids. But I think most importantly, you need stomach acid to make nitric oxide and to basically complete this cycle of taking the, the nutrients we get from the foods to ultimately producing nitric oxide. And so without stomach acid, you, you basically inhibit nitric oxide production. And then the problem now arises when, when patients take antacids. 
you know, and there's a specific class of antacids called proton pump inhibitors or PPI. These are things like Prevacid, Prilosec, Nexium, Omeprazole. Uh, and there's 200 million prescriptions written for these drugs every year. And now you don't even have to have a prescription for these. You can go to the corner store and, and buy these over the counter. And now people have been taking these proton pump inhibitors for 5, 10, 15, 20 years. And the data are very clear now that patients who have been on these proton pump inhibitors for three to five years have about a 40% higher incidence of heart attack, stroke, and Alzheimer's. So those are undeniable clinical observations, increased risk of heart attack, stroke, and Alzheimer's. And now if we work backwards and figure out why that is, we understand that it's it's a complete inhibition of nitric oxide production. So these drugs completely inhibit nitric oxide production and shut down nitric oxide from both pathways. It uncouples the NOS enzyme, leads to an increase in ADMA and asymmetric dimethyl and arginine, which inhibits nitric oxide production. And then it inhibits nitric oxide production from swallowing our own saliva. So these drugs are extremely dangerous. They should be taken off the market and patients have to find a way to get off of antacids because your body cannot and will not heal, cannot produce nitric oxide if you're taking antacids.